Besides the weird stuff that Apple is doing, the majority of modern desktop CPUs are the x86-64 architecture. And it's not just the modern CPUs. CPUs that are well over a decade old are also x86-64. Depending on whether it's Intel or AMD, the specific year the hard switch was done is a little bit different. But we started seeing these CPUs well back in the early 2000s, but they still existed alongside the older x86, or if you're in the FOSS world, i386 CPUs. Whilst most Linux distros no longer support these, there is still support for it in the kernel, so there are a handful of distros that aim to keep support around for this legacy hardware. But what about the BSD side of things? Well, there's not much to say about OpenBSD and NetBSD, because they just still support it, and to the best of my knowledge, there is no discussion about dropping support for these CPUs. But, the same can't be said about FreeBSD. Future of 32-bit platform support in FreeBSD. The end of the 32-bit era is coming to the BSD world. This is a post from John Baldwin. FreeBSD is deprecating 32-bit platforms over the next couple of major releases. We anticipate FreeBSD 15.0 will not include the ARM v6, i386, and PowerPC platforms, and FreeBSD 16.0 will not include ARM v7. So for context, the current latest version of FreeBSD is FreeBSD 14.0. Now the ARM categories are a little bit different to the x86 categories, so for x86, basically everything is just bundled into this big x86 category. ARM has always had these different separations though, with V7 being the last version of ARM that was 32-bit. Starting in V8, then you have only 64-bit CPUs. Now, PowerPC separation is less clear because there's 32-bit PowerPC and 64-bit PowerPC. There is no indication they are dropping the 64-bit support, which does actually exist, I'm going to assume that they just mean 32-bit unless otherwise specified at some later date. But this is just talking about hardware, not the software side. Support for executing 32-bit binaries on 64-bit kernels will be retained through at least the lifetime of the stable 16 branch, if not longer. There is currently no plan to remove support for 32-bit binaries on 64-bit kernels. This is a discussion that came up over on the Linux side, I want to say like four or so years back in 2019, where Canonical was like, hey, let's uh do exactly that. Let's get rid of 32-bit support for binaries, which was a pretty big deal. Because whilst the BSD side doesn't exactly have, you know, gaming like we do on Linux, Steam is heavily reliant on 32-bit multi-lib, so if they got rid of that, it would have completely killed gaming on Ubuntu. Luckily, they didn't do it, so now we just don't think about it. Considering that use case isn't there on BSD, probably wouldn't be as big of a deal, but considering the fact there are people still running these 32-bit systems, there's probably still going to be 32-bit binaries out there that some people rely on. I don't necessarily think the support for these 32-bit binaries needs to stick around forever. However, just dropping them blindly is not a good idea, as we saw from Ubuntu. What makes a lot more sense is possibly deprecate them, see what sort of feedback you get, and maybe do like a test release where there isn't support for them. And if users discover, hey, I rely on this, I rely on that, roll back the change, and then don't do it. And in FreeBSD, they don't just have one supported release. Right now, they have 13.2 and 14.0. So if something was wrong in, say, 16.0, where they were to deprecate them or remove them, then users could go back to the prior version and just keep using that until maybe some new solution is decided upon. Yeah, doing that is kind of annoying, but if you don't want to annoy your users, you know, doing a bit of testing with one release and then having another release to fall back on is probably the better way to do it than just what Ubuntu was doing. Since its inception, 
Free BSD is aimed to provide a stable and performant general purpose BSD based operating system for modern and widely available systems. Initially, this took the form of focusing on the i386 architecture, that being x86, that being the 32-bit version of what is now x86-64. Over time, FreeBSD is added and removed support for various architectures based on changes in the marketplace. In some cases, anticipated changes in the marketplace. So if things were going to exist or people were really excited about something and it didn't end up happening, you know, things of that nature. The decision to remove support for an architecture in particular depends on a couple of factors, including both the future viability, which there is no future viability, there is just the current viability that is slowly dwindling over the years, and availability of systems using that architecture. There is still a lot of them out there, but no new ones are being made as well as the developer resources available in the project to continue maintaining support. So if nobody in the project has a particular architecture, nobody can write code with that architecture in mind. At that point, you can't really support it. That isn't the case right now, otherwise they would have dropped it a long time ago, but there's likely not enough developers to make it really that viable. In addition, some changes and features may require explicit support on each architecture. Architectures that are less well maintained can degrade into attacks on such changes, delaying their implementation on architectures with stronger support. So if you design a feature designed around 64-bit architectures, if you want that to work on a 32-bit architecture, there might be some limitations you need to include or modifications you need to make. It's not just O. Oh, I have the 64-bit binary, compiler on 32-bit, and it just works. Oftentimes, there's a bit more work that will need to be done. And considering the fact that the BSD world just has less developers than what are available on Linux, having these extra taxes on things can be fairly detrimental. That's not to say that nobody works on FreeBSD, but you have a lot of people here and then a lot of people over here. There is kind of a difference there, and it makes sense why you would want to get rid of some of these things where maybe not that many people are going to be affected. It would be nice to be able to support everything forever, but at some point you might need to focus on what 99% of the users need rather than that extra 1%. Whilst Linus saying things like never break user space are great, at some point, the real world is going to get in the way. Looking forward, general purpose 32-bit platforms are in a state of decline in the marketplace. Regarding the specific architectures mentioned here, that's certainly an interesting way to say not at all in production. And we have a shrinking pool of developers dedicated to supporting them. Of our existing 32-bit platforms today, i386, ARMv6 and 7, and PowerPC, only ARM v7 continues to be used in recent system designs. We feel that FreeBSD will be better served by narrowing the focus of our developer resources on 64-bit systems moving forward. This includes both deprecating existing 32-bit platforms and not adding a new 32-bit platform. E.g., FreeBSD does not plan to add a 32-bit RISC-V architecture. Support for individual 32-bit platforms may be extended if there is both demand and commitment to increase developer resources. So once again, if there are developers who want to work on it, if there are users who actually need it and enough users that justify developers actually going out of the way to do so when they don't want to do it, then keep it around. Otherwise, you know sometimes nothing can be done about it. This is not entirely new information. When FreeBSD 14 came out, this was in the release notes. FreeBSD 15.0 is not expected to include support for 32-bit platforms other than ARM v7. The ARM v6, i386, and PowerPC platforms are deprecated and will be removed. 64-bit systems will still be able to run older 32-bit binaries. We expect to support ARM v7 as a tier 2 architecture in FreeBSD 15 and Stable 15. However, we also anticipate that ARM v7 may be removed in FreeBSD 16.0. We will provide an update on the status of ARM v7 for both 15.x and 16.x at the time of 15.0 release. 
ports will not include support for deprecated 32-bit platforms for FreeBSD 15.0 and later releases. These future releases will not include binary packages or support for building packages from ports for deprecated 32-bit platforms. And if you do happen to use one of these platforms, this is very important. With the current support schedule, Stable 14 will reach end of life five years after the release of FreeBSD 14.0 release. The EOL of Stable 14 will mark the end of support for deprecated 32-bit platforms, including source releases, pre-built packages, and support for building applications from ports. With the release of 14.0 release in November 2023, support for deprecated 32-bit platforms will end in November 2028. So there is still quite a bit of time, and by that point, even less users are going to still be on this hardware. This is going to be at least like 15 or so years since there's been wide access to 64-bit hardware. So even users running really, really old hardware likely will be on something a little bit newer. Thinking about it again, it's actually closer to 20 years. Now, it's hard to say what 2028 is going to be like, but at least at this stage, there are still options if you do have 32-bit hardware. For example, as I mentioned earlier, OpenBSD still is going to have support for 32-bit. Whether they are then, check on the project. NetBSD is also in the exact same boat. If you prefer to be in the Linux world, there are a couple of options. Now, Debian is in the process of like, half deprecating their 32-bit support. So they have support for the 32-bit packages, but they are doing away with the 32-bit image, so you'd be more responsible for doing it yourself. And there's a lot of distros that have 32-bit support that are based on Debian. So it's fairly likely that those may end up going by the wayside as well. But there are things like Puppy Linux and Arch Linux 32, which is separate from the main Arch Linux, but I would be expecting your options to get more and more limited, especially five years from now. But how many of you guys are actually affected? Is there anybody watching this channel that is actively running 32-bit hardware? I don't mean you have 32-bit hardware in a closet somewhere. You don't even know if it boots anymore. But actually using it as one of your main systems. If you are let me know down below and let me know why you're doing that. I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and get more bits.